Hey guys, what's up? I am Nikhil from Dope Motions, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create this dynamic animation, merging a simple image and some text animation techniques with each other to achieve this really cool look. And you can use this technique to create some unique concepts. You can use different images, different shapes, and you know, text animations to create this. So it's gonna be a super useful tutorial using which you will be able to create your own dynamic animations inside of After Effects without using any plugins. So with that said, let's jump straight into After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are in Photoshop instead of After Effects because for this lesson, we need a little help of Photoshop with the final animation. So as you can see here, I have a very simple image opened up in Photoshop and we can divide this image into three sections. The first will be the subject or the person sitting on the top of the building. The second or the background will be the buildings that we have, these three buildings which are in focus and the third section of the image will be this far behind buildings and some sky that is getting hidden due to the fog or smoke whatever that is so let's split this image into two sections so the first will be this foreground of the person and the building and the second section will be these two buildings so in order to cut them out i'm going to select this and select the pen tool so we can press p on the keyboard and that will activate the pen tool now go right here and make sure it's set to path instead of shape and then i can zoom in quite a lot and start cutting out this section so i can just simply take my time and cut it out you don't need to rush because we need to be a little bit precise while we do the cutout of this particular subject And now after the selection is made, make sure to right click and make selection. Click on OK and there you have a selection. Now you can select the image and create a layer mask by clicking on this particular button. So now that we have separated the foreground from the background, I can duplicate this, press Ctrl J to duplicate it. And then I can select the layer mask, right click and delete the layer mask. Now I can make the selection of the building using the same technique. So press P to select the pen tool and I'm going to cut out the two buildings for the background so there we have our second selection now right click and make selection press ok and then select the image and click on layer mask now if you want we can select the layer mask press b to select the brush tool and make sure the foreground color is white and let's paint in a few areas which you think can be or need to fix so i'm going to click right here and bring back the building from here and from here as well all right, that is looking good. Now, if I turn on the image, the background image, so let's call this boy and then, and let's call this one, the building. All right. So if I hide the boy image, you can see in the building image, we can still see the boy. So we need to fill this area with the building pattern. So to do that, make sure to select the image, right click and rasterize layer. Then select the marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool, select this area like so and press shift F5 to bring up the content aware fill and press on OK. And boom, there you go. Now there are a few patches, but that's not going to be a problem. So here we have two layers of building and the boy. So let's place the boy image on top of the building. And there you go. Now let's save this. So I'm going to press Ctrl S to save it. I'm going to save it in the pictures folder. We can call it, let's say typo image and click on save now here we are in after effects let's double click in the project panel and go into the pictures folder and there you'll find the typo image that we have saved click on import now here we have three different options footage composition and composition retain layer sizes so i'm going to select that make sure the layer option is set to editable layer styles and click on ok now if i open this typo image composition you can see we have two layers with the boy and the building so now we can go ahead and start animating this now before we start animating i will go into windows and turn on 
the keyframe wingman script this is going to help us in animation later on as we proceed with the video so i'll go to around 1 second and 15 frames select both of these layers hit p to bring down the position property and create a keyframe let's move that keyframe at the very start of the timeline and then i'm going to select the boy image move them up holding shift select the building image and move that down holding shift a little bit so now we have something like this then i'll go to three second and copy this keyframe Control c Control v this one as well Control c Control v now let's go to four second and 15 frames and select these two keyframes copy and paste it Control c Control v select these two keyframes copy and paste it Control c Control v so now if i preview this area we have this animation which looks pretty lame by the way so let's make this a bit more interesting and to do that i will be using the keyframe wingman script so i'll select all the keyframes and using this handle i'll increase the easy ease of this keyframe so basically what i'm doing here is if i select them again go into the graph and here you can see i am tweaking the keyframes using this one single handle pretty nice and easy so let's set this to around 85 and now if I preview this, we have a bit more interesting animation as you can see here. Pretty cool. Now let's add a shape here. So I'm going to select a eclipse tool. Let's create a circle holding control and shift like so. For the time, I'm going to set this to a nice white color and align this into the center like somewhere around here and place this behind the building or at the back. Let's call this circle and then move the anchor point in the center so to do that i'll hold control and double click on the pan behind tool that should move the anchor point and now i'm going to animate the circle as well so let's go right here select the circle hit s to bring down the scale property create keyframe go to one second and 15 frames and increase the scale like so then go to three seconds copy this keyframe Control c Control v so now we have something like this let's copy this keyframe again so i'm going to select both of these keyframes hit Control c Control v then i'll select all the keyframes and just click on this middle button to apply the same graph to these keyframes as well so now if i preview this you can see we have this very nice animation pretty cool now let's also add some color to this circle so I'm going to go into effects and presets and search for fill effect and let's drag and drop it on the circle. Let's set this to kind of an off white color. So let's animate the fill again. I'm going to select the layer, create a keyframe on the color property. Make sure it's at white. Go to one second and 15 frames and let's change the color to a nice yellow color. If I hit U, you can see we have keyframes on the color as well. So let's go right here. Copy this keyframe again, Control C, Control V, go right here, copy these two keyframes, Control C, Control V, select all the keyframes and click on this button. So now if I preview this, we have a really interesting animation. Now I also want to turn the images into a black and white theme. So to do that, I'll select the building image first, go into effects and presets and search for a tint effect. Double click to apply that. Then also let's add a levels effect just to increase the blacks in this image just a little bit like so and then let's copy the tint from here Control c and paste it on the boy Control v so we have this really nice look as you can see looking pretty good now let's select the boy layer and bring down the black to kind of a faded black just to get a nice faded look now let's go ahead and add some text to this so to do that i'll create a new composition let's call this text let's change the width to around 2000 and height to 2500 and click on ok select the text tool and you can of course type in anything that you want i'm going to type in ryzen let's make this full caps and the font that i will be using select it and let's select a different font Something like this one looks pretty nice. Let's increase the size a bit. All right. Align this and I'm going to place this right over here. Now I'm going to select the text layer, right click, go into create and convert this into shapes from text. So now all these text layers is a shape. 
so i'm going to animate this now let's go into the contents and as you can see every letter is converted into a shape so i'm going to select this layer go into search and type in path so we can see only the path properties of this particular layer at the very start i'm going to create a keyframe on the path like so let's go to one second and 15 frames and let's elevate the letters so first let's select this r so before we elevate it let's hit ctrl r to bring up the rulers and drag a few guides here just so that we can be a bit more precise i'm gonna drag it here as well all right so that is nice and now i can select the r first drag this like so now let's select the s as well so i'm gonna drag to make a selection make sure to hold shift and then i'll i can just drag this up make sure again to select all the points all right and finally the end I'm going to drag this right here and this one here. So now we have something which looks like this. Pretty cool. Let's go to three seconds. So I'm going to select these, this one and this one. Control C, Control V. And then go to four second and 15 frames. And this time I'm going to add or drag the rulers again. Somewhere around there. Or you can also actually turn on the title action save just to be a bit more precise here just like so so now we have this animation which looks pretty cool let's move the time indicator at three seconds and let's create a keyframe manually on this particular path which doesn't has a keyframe and this one as well then let's go to four second and 15 frames select these points and let's move them like so select these ones and move them like so so now we have something like this which looks pretty cool go to six seconds and let's copy paste these keyframes Control c Control v so now if i preview this we have something which looks like this now to make them a bit more interesting i'll select all the different keyframes and click on this small icon to apply the same graph and now we have this really nice animation so with this i will also add a color a nice color to this so i'll go into effects and presets and search for fill effect let's drag and apply this on the shape layer let's give it a nice yellow color just like the one we gave to the circle create a keyframe go to one second and 15 frames set this to white press u let's go right here copy this keyframe Control c Control v go right over here copy these two keyframes Control c Control v and then select them and click on this button so now we have something like this pretty nice now let's go back to our typo image composition and drag the text composition place this below the boy layer so right over here looks good and let's also animate the position of this so i'm going to press p to bring down the position property i'm going to place this right over here and actually instead of animating this i think we can parent this to the boy layer because it's animating along so i think this can be better yeah that looks much better and now finally let's create a final render comp let's call this a render with the width of 2000 and height of 2500 click on ok and drag the typo image composition so here we have it looking pretty good now let's add a nice texture on this so here i have a nice texture image let's change the blending mode of this so press f4 on the keyboard to turn on the blending mode option and set this to multiply press t to bring down the opacity and set this to around 70 or 75 percent so it, it has a nice texture on this so maybe around 50 should be fine yeah so we get a really nice texture as you can see now let's hit Control y to create a new solid called this bg for a background let's give it a nice black background there we go and as you can see this is looking very very cool 
Now finally, I will add a secondary animation of zoom. So to do that, I'm going to right click and create a new adjustment layer. We can call this zoom. Go into effects and presets and search for transform effect. Double click to apply that and animate this. So let's create a keyframe on the scale. Go to one second and 15 frames and let's scale this up to 115. That is fine. Hit U so I can see the keyframes. Go to three seconds. Copy this keyframe. Control C, Control V. Go to four second and 15 frames. Copy this keyframe. Control C, Control V. Go to six seconds and copy this keyframe. Control C, Control V. Select the keyframe and apply the same graph. So now if I preview this, we have a really interesting and dynamic looking typography animation combined with some image and the best part about these kind of animation is that with different text and a different image it will look completely amazing and it's up to you how you use this effect in different styles with different images and text make it as cool as you want as complex as you want